here we are at the circus. There's the bloke on the flying trapeze. The beautiful high wire artiste. The ringmaster resplendent in top hat and tails. And the clowns. <coughs> See, it's the clowns. It's those clowns again. Clowns. Why are clowns so creepy? It's a question that's occurred to us this morning after all this newspaper coverage of the new killer clown craze. Have you heard about this? It's a prank that involves people dressing up as clowns, jumping out of bushes to deliberately scare you, and then they run off. You might think it's just a bit of harmless fun on the lead-up to Halloween, but can you imagine face-to-face -face with a clown in the middle of the night? You'd be terrified, wouldn't you? Why are clowns so creepy? What is it about clowns that just sends shivers up some of our spines? Well, Mark Powell, it's my mate. He's a hypnotherapist. He's based in Redditch and he helps people. He helps people like you to overcome their fears and phobias. Uh, he's on the line now. Mark, good morning, sir. Good morning to you. I tell you what sent a shiver down my spine, that sound effect of that woman screaming when I've got a phone right next to my ear. I know. Could have she, warned her. She does overdo it a bit on the <laughs> screams, I don't mind telling you. Uh, what do you think of the craze, Mark? Have you heard about it? Yeah, I mean, the, the truth is, it, it's not unusual for you to be surprised and scared by somebody jumping out at you, particularly if they have a knife, is it really? I think, mm. as a prank, I'm not a massive fan. Um, it, you know, being scared of clowns is one thing, but to be, in truth, it's quite natural for you to be a little bit shocked and surprised if somebody jumps out at you, particularly if they're holding a knife. It's not really that funny, is it? No, because some of the, you're right, some of these clowns are holding knives and, and, yeah. and um, what is it again, the, the, the saws, the chainsaws, some of them. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's not funny, is it? That's not that, funny that is, of course, that's scary. I mean, let's face it, if you were walking along and someone just jumped out at you and started screaming at you, that would also make you jump and that would be quite frightening in itself. That's a natural reaction to something making you jump. So that is kind of a, a you know, it's not surprising, is it really? It's more, it's more, but should you be scared of clowns, I suppose? That's the thing, that's the question. Well, let's, let's try and answer that question. What is it about clowns that makes them so creepy that makes us scared of them? Um, I, think it's, I think it's Tim Curry, the actor. It Tim was in. Um, Curry. Yeah, do you remember he was in yeah. It, wasn't he? Stephen King's It. I think yes. it was Penny. Was it Pennywise? Yes. I think he started this whole thing where suddenly horror films will have people dressed as clowns, and it's scary. I, I don't. I, I, maybe I'm too young, but before that, I don't think there was a lot of really kind of scary clowns. Sometimes maybe it's scary to go to the circus when you're young because it's just a loud place. Um, and we're only born with two fears, um, loud noises and falling. So maybe when you're young and you go to the circus and it's loud, that can be a bit overwhelming. But I think Tim Curry and all the horror films maybe kind of put this seed in people's, in some people's mind. Not everybody's... Are you frightened of clowns? Well, I don't think I am, no. But I no. would be frightened if they jumped out at me in the middle yeah. of the night, obviously. Well, that's normal, isn't it? Well, <laughs> it is. So Stephen King's got a lot to answer for, Mark. I, I, I blame him. Yeah. I blame him for it. But, I mean, I always liked Tim Curry, so I wasn't that... Maybe I wasn't scared. Maybe if you're not a Tim Curry fan then maybe that's what makes it more scary. All fears and phobias are things that we learn. Like I say, we're only born with loud noises and falling, that's it. Everything else, you know, fears of spiders, driving is probably one of the biggest ones that I see people scared of driving, or heights, we learn it. Something, maybe something happens when we're younger, or maybe we have a, a parent or guardian who perhaps teaches us to be scared, you know, mm -hmm. in the case of spiders, you maybe you have a, you had a mother who went, ah, oh, spiders, and then you thought, oh my goodness, that must be scary. Yeah. So you've learnt it. Now, if you've learnt it, that's good news because it means you can unlearn it. So you never have to live with any fear. You never have to live with any phobia, um, whether it's clowns or whatever it is. It's natural, though, to be a little bit surprised when someone jumps at you with a knife. Yes. If I was to come to you with a real serious fear of clowns, I was really, really scared of them, how would you go about teaching me to accept clowns. How would you go about curing me? Curing me, is that the right phrase? Yeah, well, we're not really supposed to use the word cure, but I would help you to come to terms with it. And, I, I, in, you know, in my experience, you can get rid of these things. I would try to find out maybe where it came from. So often it comes from perhaps one incident, maybe something happened when you were younger. That tends to be where we get most of our phobias. And, you know, what, what you think, why that is. And then we kind of work on that. And it really doesn't take very long. People, people, fears and phobias are one of the easiest things to help people with, really. People only see you for like three or four sessions, less than an hour each time. And it doesn't take that long to kind of let go of that fear, let go of that feeling so it's completely gone. 
and then you kind of think to yourself, well, it wasn't a rational thing. And, yeah. and it's not easy to say that to people, but it takes a little bit of work, <laughs> work sometimes. But, you know, there's no, if you want to overcome a fear, you can overcome any fear. It's only, sometimes people want to have a fear because they actually maybe quite like it or they're not that bothered. So you might kind of keep that fear. But yeah. if you really want to overcome it, then you can always get rid of it. You don't have to live with it at all. Clowns is, an un- is a sort of an unusual one, I suppose, because like I say, it tends to be, you know, spiders, driving, heights and things like that. People, if someone's afraid of clowns, they're probably not that bothered about sorting it out because they probably don't see a lot of clowns. They probably don't go to the circus, so they would just kind of avoid it. So it depends on, you know, how common the fear is. If it's something like driving, most people who've got a dri- worry of driving might need to do that, but they'll do something about it. You've said it twice now, but I've never heard anybody else say it before. The only two fears that we're born with, I think I heard mm-hmm. you say this right, are loud yep. noises and falling and everything else we just pick up. Yeah, and, and you'll probably know, you know, if you are afraid of something, if you do have a kind of a fear, you probably would know where it came from yourself before we even explored that. You know, if you're afraid of something, you know, like I say, spiders is a good one because often when you're a kid, you maybe have someone who screams and gets scared of them. Maybe with driving, maybe you might have been okay and then perhaps you had an accident and you haven't quite come to terms with that accident yet. You tend to have picked them up from somewhere. But yeah, loud noises and falling, the only ones that we're, we're born with, and they're quite a natural thing that obviously when you startled as a child by that loud noise or if you fall over, obviously that hurts. So those ones are the natural. Everything else you've learned it. If you've learned it, you can unlearn it. It's just a process. And, and the other thing is people sometimes go, oh, I, I couldn't be helped. Um, I don't have much of an imagination and I couldn't imagine being all right. But, of course, you can because you must have been able to imagine not being all right. If you can imagine being worried, if you can imagine being scared, then you must be able to turn that around, even if you don't quite believe it yet. Fantastic stuff. Mark, uh, lovely speaking to you again. Thank you very you much too, for Mark. your time. Take and care. Bye. And your expertise as well. For more information on Mark's work, log on to Mark Powlett. Uh, Mark Powlett, one word. Powlett is spelled P-O-W-L-E-T-T. Dot co.uk.